just maybe saving the very best for last. We'll find out soon. As you have already seen, interesting, compelling, and at times dramatic volleyball competition in the regional semifinal round. A look at our section of the bracket coming up first. Kentucky and San Diego, the number two and three seeds. Texas and Ohio State will play for a spot in the national semifinals on Saturday. Stanford pursuing their 10th national championship more than anybody else, taking on the very upset minded. They've already pulled off a couple, the Houston Cougars and Kentucky and San Diego, both conference champions, playing for the very first time ever, which is kind of surprising. Hi, everybody, and welcome with my partner out of the University of Florida, Missy Whittemore. I'm Paul Sunderland. I mentioned what had gone on today, and I described it. Tell me what you saw today and what you thought. I tell you what, I've been impressed with the high level of play at every site, and I think it's really exciting that we already have four conferences who have advanced to that round of eight. And after this match, we'll have five different conferences guaranteed a spot in that regional final match on Saturday. It speaks to the exciting growth of volleyball across the country. San Diego Toreros, champions of the WCC, where they went undefeated. They've got a ton of weapons, the best team ever for the Toreros. And they're dangerous because they get high level production from all three pins. It's been Brianna Edwards with the hot hand, 18 kills in their second round win, but it's Grace Froling who really allows them to split the net, six foot five on the right side. And last but not least, Katie Lukes, the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, has led this team all season in kills per set. She's dangerous front row and back. And look who's blooming again. Who's back in the tournament but Gabby Blossom, the transfer from Penn State? I think she's the X factor. She could be the difference, the player that pushes San Diego into the regional final for the first time ever. And the Kentucky Wildcats, national champions as recently as 2020. They have got a load of weapons as well, particularly on the pins. Yeah, it starts with Reagan Rutherford on the right side. She led the SEC this season in kills per set. The way she slices and dices with that left hand, she really has the ability to stress a defense opposite her though Adana Rollins such a versatile attacker she's great with the way she moves the ball around and changes up the speed of her attack where's the Johnny Taylor one of my favorite players in all the college volleyball instead we go with hey the player of the year out of the conference Emma Grohm with the setting position she's the engine that makes this thing run she loves the chess match part of the game and when you put her up against Gabby Blossom two of the best setters in the country this is going to make for a really exciting matchup. And the aforementioned Blossom, there is Adana Rollins. Gabby Blossom to start things off. Best three out of five sets to move on. And thank you, Johnny Teeler. <laughs> Making me seem prescient off the right side. A national champion back in 2020. And if you've never seen Kentucky play, the way they use a, jo a Johnny Teeler is very unique. She will block out of the middle, but get used to seeing her swing from the right side where she takes off of two feet. They're able to get the most out of her talent as a bit of an undersized middle by using her that way. Here is Audrey Whitworth, 5'7", freshman out of Harrisburg, Kentucky, on to serve and play some defense, and immediately to good effect for the Kentucky Wildcats, 22-7 and seven on the year. They were co-champions at 15-3 and three in the SEC. They have either won the SEC outright or shared it for the last six straight years. They shared it this year with Mary Wise's Florida Gators, who were eliminated earlier today. First look at Adana Rollins finds a small seam of the block wearing number eight in blue. Mentioned her ability to move the ball and you get a look at it there as she turns that one down the line. In his 18th year in Lexington, Craig Skinner mentioned the national championship. That was the first ever by an SEC team. 18 straight tournament appearances, the national coach of the year in that same year in 2020. Tough serving right now from Whitworth. Very clean, flat and clean. And Grace Froling, you mentioned at six foot five, wearing number 11 in white, the oppo for the Toreros. Nice kill off the left side to get him on the board. Right in front of us, we get a look at that sharp angle as she just cuts it inside the block. And with that sort of swing, she's going to force Don Adonna Rollins out there in left front to defend first. Here's Maddie Allen, 5'8", junior out of Temecula, California. 32 aces so far on the year. Perfect pass in system and a pretty good block deflection. Deflection or deflection, you take your pick. <laughs> and that deflected off the block and out of bounds. Nice transition swing. On the left side for San Diego, that was number 18, as you mentioned, the conference player of the year. Katie Lukes, there is Jen Petrie speaking 
Conference Coach and Player of the Year. Seventh time Coach Petrie has been the WCC Coach of the Year in her 24th year in her hometown of San Diego. Nice eye down the line by Whitworth. You gotta be a good student of geography letting that one go. As we take a look at those coaches, Paul, this matchup intriguing for many reasons, but one being the fact that Craig Skinner and Jennifer Petrie have never met before. Never even said hello, not even at the AVCA <laughs> convention. I well, mean, I don't know about that. I know what you meant. Yeah, first meeting ever. Players file, flying around, a little bit of confusion, not once but twice for San Diego. Both teams with outstanding, because every team's got to have it, outstanding Liberos. Trolling again. The ball was dug, but that will be nullified. Point San Diego on the net violation. Nice high swing there by Froling. And as you mentioned, Paul, Kentucky known for building their success around setter libero combinations. And I think the same can be said this year of San Diego. Annie Benbow, 5'3", redshirt senior out of Frisco, Texas, the all-time digs leader at San Diego and all-conference once again. The Libero of the Year, Rollins. Did that get a piece of the block? We saw a lot of that throughout the course of the day. Some very, very close calls up into the net. Did it catch the blocker? Did it not? What are the officials looking for? Yeah, did it hit that blocker's arm? Obviously, that ball hit the tape off of the Adana Rollins swing, but no reaction from San Diego. So I think it's safe to say the blocker got a piece of that one. Reagan Rutherford wearing number 10 in blue into the match now a dynamic player off the edge and that's a smart swing good side for froling averaging three kills per set hit 326 out of los angeles three times an all-conference performer for the terrarios nice pass the ds with oh look at the block Nice pass, good swing. Better stuff that time by six foot two redshirt senior. Kenny Luke swearing number 18 in white. Only one loss, that was at Louisville, the first time undefeated in quite some time. 26 match winning streak, 13 sweeps, and there was one additionally. They won 40 sets in a row as Froling continues to serve. Prior to the tournament, only seven teams had taken a set off of San Diego. That's how dominant they have been this season. Really smart swing by Adana Rollins going on to San Diego defeated Northern Colorado 3-1 and a very good team out of the Pac-12 Washington State 3-1 and Kentucky was a team that really impressed us last weekend. Hit 389 against Loyola Chicago and 362 against Western Kentucky both in sweeps. Smart shot, getting the ball, first contact on the setter, Grom. Really good digging by the DSs and then down the line once again by Lukes. The tempo of the ball there from Gabby Blossom in transition, able to get to that ball and then push it to the outside to Katie Lukes, and it's just ahead of the defense. You see there Bella Bell not able to close for Kentucky. That was a wonderful look from the end zone at how fast that mm -hmm. ball is set. The timing has to be absolutely perfect. Good block touch transition. Luke's out of the back row. Ball still alive. Quick tempo to the outside. Good cover again. Nice play by Allen. San Diego ahead in the point. Can they take advantage? And they do. Haley Stoner wearing number eight in white, 6'1", sophomore out of San Marcos, California. Remember yesterday at the press conference with Jen Petrie, I, I said, hey, Stoner was just hammering the ball today and practiced it. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, I saw the arm from the sophomore, one of the few younger players on this very veteran San Diego team. Funny how the tournament has a tendency to give you a couple extra inches in your jump and a little bit faster arm speed, the excitement of postseason. Kind of everything what we expected out of this matchup between the number two seeded Toreros, number three seeded Kentucky Wildcats. Tied at seven. Opening set, Stanford and Houston still to come. Both teams look very comfortable in serve-receive. Kentucky Block doing a good job on Edwards. Aren't they? Aren't they ever? It was Bella Bell, and now in middle front, it's Johnny Teeler who 
has come to the front row, and although she's much smaller in stature, listed at five foot ten, she's got a huge jump, and Reagan Rutherford does a nice job of setting that block up inside there. Shank pass and cannot be kept off the floor that time by Stoner. I remember we talked yesterday to Kentucky head coach Craig Skinner. We talked about Taylor among others. I said, Craig, you're undersized in today's game on the wings. And he said, yeah, but how high do we get over the net? How high do Adonna Rollins, Reagan Rutherford, along with uh, Johnny Teeler, how high do they jump? And the answer is very. Yeah, he said, how do you define undersized? Because we've got the jumps to play high above the net. Emma Grome is a setter. is playing some nice defense for Kentucky. As are the DSs. We've mentioned them a couple of different times. This ball through the block and down. Big swing on the perimeter. Nice job by Aaron Lamb coming to get that one. That ball is inside, a little out of system as Emma Grum has to go get it and use her forearms and great footwork there by Lamb. This is a Kentucky team who's dealt with injury all season long. Lamb, one of those players who's been in and out of the, out of the lineup, and they seem to be healthy at just the right time. I'll tell you what, that was a really heady set that time by Gabby Blossom. She knows that Brianna Edwards has got to find her rhythm and be a big part of this match. Six foot three, we've talked about the size of the Toreros, and that can be key for them in this matchup against Kentucky if they can take advantage of their size. Good delivery by Grom, looking to go high flat. Lamb missed that one, had 18 kills earlier in the year against Arkansas. Six foot three sophomore out of Stewartville, Minnesota. Stoner does a nice job on her serve there, pulling the setter off the net and creating some predictable offense. Shank pass, that missed by Adonna Rollins, and we've got the precise numbers in terms of percentage of perfect pass, and among the receivers for Kentucky, Rollins is the lowest. Rollins is a player who's put a lot of hours in passing practice from what Craig Skinner has told us, but expect teams to go after her. Good pass by Rutherford, and a better block. What a good play out of the middle by transfer from Indiana, Layla Blackwell, six foot four junior out of San Diego. This is actually her second year with San Diego. Brianna Edwards also for transfer from Indiana in her first year with San Diego. We've talked a lot about Gabby Blossom, another Big Ten transfer to San Diego from Penn State. Rutherford, really quick, hard swing by Reagan Rutherford, six foot junior out of Missouri City, Texas. All SEC this last year and one of four members of this Kentucky squad that was on that 2020 national championship team. 29 aces so far on the year. Pretty good first contact once again by the back row. Olivia Bennett, five foot five freshman out of, ironically, Lexington, Kentucky, maybe saved the play that time for the Toreros. Yeah, very interesting matchup here in the tournament for Bennett to play her hometown school. And I think it speaks a lot to really Craig Skinner and how he's groomed volleyball in that area that we're starting to see players across the country with, with from Lexington. Good pass in system, but a rare mistake by Ajani Teeler. Ted Senior out of Grand Prairie, Texas, all SEC three times. You mentioned undersized. Talk about an understatement. She's five foot ten. I know she hits mostly on the right, but blocking middle at this level and winning a national championship. She had eight kills in that championship match against Texas. Talk about good defensive setters. You gotta include Gabby Blossom in that conversation as well. by Benbo, three ball coming to Kentucky. San Diego leading by two. Overpass, look at the block. Emma Grom and Ajani Teeler got that against six foot four Blackwell. But Layla look, Blackwell would love to have that one back. That was a misplay. Look how hard Ajani Teeler works to transition off the right side of the court during that rally to take swings at the ball, then back on the net to block, and she finishes the rally over and left front with that stuff block. She's all over the court. 21 digs already between these two teams, 12 for San Diego. Off the edge of the block and down, important kill for Edwards. We will take immediate timeout at 14. We talked about the injuries 
to Kentucky. None was more important to Ajani Teeler. They also suffered a couple of concussions to key players. Kentucky, 22 and seven, with seven losses. We'll go back through their resume, but uh, part of those coming particularly to LSU during the period when they were shorthanded. Rollins gets stuffed, Blackwell. This is a much longer San Diego team. Not only are they the most talented ever for the Toreros, but they are physical, long, well coached, and can play volleyball. NCAA college volleyball tournament coming your way. The regional semifinal round, Louisville and Oregon. What a match against Nebraska. And the Pitt Panthers over the Florida Gators, three sets to one. Wisconsin won the first two sets at home in Madison, but Penn State has come back to win the third. That is over on ESPNU. Back with Missy Whittemore. I'm Paul Sunderland. Closing out the day here in Stanford. Still to come, the number one seeded Stanford Cardinal going for their 10th national championship going against the Houston Cougars who are in the tournament for the first time since 2000. But one of the most interesting stories played five sets in Omaha last week against Creighton and against Auburn. And here they are. And there is their outstanding head coach, David Rare. That ball misses out of bounds. The serving has been tough, but also in. And I think part of the story for San Diego right now has to be the blocking. Only out blocking Kentucky by one in terms of stuffs, three to two, but their length at the net has given Kentucky some issues, particularly when Kentucky has been out of system. Only six kills right now to San Diego's nine. Beautiful offense and delivery. Gabby Blossom, and when you look at the numbers, Kentucky is hitting zero. 27 swings, six kills, six errors. Really like what I'm seeing from Layla Blackwell so far here today. You know, against Northern Colorado, she had a career high 17 kills, so she's really come alive in the tournament. Gabby Blossom, that's one. She would have made that dig if it didn't deflect off the top of the tape. Blossom is an outstanding defensive player, had a wonderful career. For Russ Rose at Penn State, we wish Russ well, winner of seven national championships, now enjoying a cigar. A good glass of scotch and probably not some golf. It's a little chilly right now back at Penn State. Emma Grohn. Off the edge of the block and out of bounds. Katie Lukes passing and attacking. You said it. I was going to say the same thing. Grohn forces the Lukes to make first contact, and it doesn't matter. Nails that pass. Hands it right to Gabby Blossom, and then a nice swing through the seam of the block. Rolling back to serve already with three kills on six swings and a block. Luke's three kills as well. Neither of them with an error. Good serve down the line, but handled by Whitworth. That's a rip. Reagan Rutherford has a really, really live arm. 3.8 kills per set, number one in the SEC, and hitting 343. Yeah, another look at this, and you see the block is on the run in system. It takes the block out of play, gives Reagan Rutherford just enough room to get that arm through. 18-15 is the advantage. We were tied at 11 before San Diego went on a 4-1 run leading into the media timeout. Luke's again, not great contact there, cuffing it down the line and out of bounds. Jen Petrie coming over to ask whether or not there might have been a touch. It was clearly out. Katie Luke said no, no, yeah, that was a just a wise choice there by Katie Luke. That was just miscontact yeah. came off of her hand. Fight. Coach, that was a crummy swing, my bad. <laughs> and you are depending on players' honesty because you've only got two of those challenges. Obviously, if you win it, you get it back, but if not, you lose it. And so you got to depend on those players. Well, that was an interesting factor in that dramatic match between Nebraska and Oregon, won by the Ducks. Matt Ulmer, the fine coach for Oregon, was out of challenges, and John Cook, in one particular set, was out of substitutions. So there was a lot of outage in that particular <laughs> matchup. There is Kylie Prees, six foot two junior out of San Juan Capistrano, on to serve. The DSs and serving specialists have really been good for both teams. Oh, nice little one-arm stab. the edge of the block and out of bounds. And after a slow start, Brianna Edwards is starting to register some kills. And again, Gabby Blossom, the touch on the ball. She is just insanely accurate, continues to put the ball right in the window for each of her attackers. 
Edwards now with three kills on nine swings after hitting a whole handful of zeros to start this match. The University of San Diego, one of the most beautiful campuses anywhere on the planet, and they absolutely owned the Player and Coach of the Year awards. Yeah, I couldn't have done much more than than Katie Lukes, Annie Bingo, Gabby Blossom, and Jennifer Petrie taking home the hardware, and rightfully so, as they go undefeated, 18 and 0, first time since 2019 they've gone undefeated in West Coast Conference. And have to give the Pepperdine Wave some love. Emily Helmuth, the freshman of the year, so the WCC, which is a very, very solid conference. They've had as many as five teams into the NCAA tournament. This year they had four. Their tournament recap, I mentioned the win over Northern Colorado. Very impressive over Washington State. They lost the third set and then rebounded. They played the first two rounds at home, and there was a lot of discussion, and rightfully so, a lot of hand-wringing by the committee and everybody around volleyball. Should the Toreros have been a number one seed? They are a number two seed. Stanford got the last number one seed. I think they deserved a number one seed. That's, that's my opinion. You look at their resume. They beat Pittsburgh, they beat Ohio State, they beat everybody in their conference, they did everything they possibly could. But the committee decided on Stanford. And Stanford with three more top 25 wins than San Diego. Some of that obviously out of San Diego's control based on their conference schedule. But yeah, I think it was certainly a toss up. That was a hard call. The point you make is a great one because it's it's a lot of math, it's a lot of algorithms, it's a lot of ins and a lot of outs. And, and here we are in San Diego said that they are well past the disappointment of not being able to play this at home, and they're focused on the task at hand. Priest with that one one arm bandit on to serve. And another. She's got a, a future out on the beach. Reagan Rutherford with a kill, but does Kentucky and Grome need to go to the middle a little bit more offensively? You know, I, I'm not sure that there's point production for them there. Reagan Rutherford is able to terminate there. I think you get the most out of her in this trip across the front row right now. Oh, nice hard swing on the slide. That ball off of Lamb and out of bounds. And the ability of Gabby Blossom to hold the middle. She is so deceptive. Her hands are so still prior to releasing the ball. I wanted to clarify a point because the middle blocker, one, Ajani Teeler for Kentucky, is getting a lot of opportunities, just not out of the middle of the court. And Bella Bell, not a big part of the offense so far for the Wildcats. 21-17 is the advantage. Ever since that 4-1 run, it's been San Diego. Edwards absolutely detonating into the cross court. Heavy, heavy hammer. Heavy arm and she swings on top of this ball, goes up and gets it somewhat out of system. That ball is inside, nice footwork. Well played by Edwards. Biggest lead now for San Diego. They're doing a very good job with a lot of block deflections that set up that last scoring opportunity. <laughs> Double R, Reagan Rutherford. The Rutherford-Edwards matchup that we're getting right now playing out in front of us here at the net is so much fun to watch. We saw Emily Londot playing at the oppo, the opposite position, light up this afternoon, taking out Hugh McCutcheon and Minnesota, then Jenna Courtney Bizzario for the Pitt Panthers. We're going to see Kendall Kipp play at the opposite, and Reagan Rutherford. <laughs> bringing a new piece of sport court. You just don't expect it when you look across the net and see a Johnny Teeler. But look at this, three blocks up, showing so much respect for the swing of Brianna Edwards. I think Adonna Rollins enjoyed that as much as we did. That was a <laughs> tremendous, tremendous play. You know how technically sound Johnny Teeler has to be blocking middle at this level of competition at only five foot ten. Just a tremendous, tremendous athlete volleyball player. And I've always said how much I respect Craig Skinner for the way in which he uses her. You know that he like he highlights her strengths as an as an athlete by allowing her to attack from the right side, block in the middle, just gets so much out of her as a player. We showed you all of the awards taken in the WCC by San Diego. Well. Kentucky Wildcats certainly had their share as well, led by Emma Grohm, this year's Center of the Year in the SEC, following in the footsteps of Madison Lilly some years ago.
doing a fantastic job. Setter of the year and player of the year, which has been a very common occurrence for the Kentucky Wildcats over the last several years under Craig Skinner. Over Loyal of Chicago and Western Kentucky. Out ace their opponents. Wow, that's a very, very interesting stat. Thanks, crew in the truck. I missed that one, but the most interesting thing to me Loyola well, Chicago, pretty good team, and Western Kentucky, very well respected. And if you just eyeball the, the average, Kentucky hit 375 against those two teams in six sets. I actually heard both Ajani Teeler and Craig Skinner speak to how they had trained their serving late in the season and seen an improve in, in the pressure, an improvement in the pressure they were able to create from the service line. And I asked them about that yesterday at practice, and they were talking about skip outs or bounce outs where they had targets outside the court and they wanted to drive the ball so hard and low that when it bounced out it was hitting targets outside the court so just small ways in which you can tweak training over the course of the season to keep players attention good pass by bennett san diego's been better in first contact rutherford scrambling in the back court free ball for the toreros Rollins says, what else have you got? High flat, nice play defensively by Lukes. Edwards, perfect tip right on the sideline. Boy, the level in this match right now is really high, and it's just the opening set. And Edwards knows what she's doing here, because in this half of a rotation, Rutherford stays in and serves and plays defense. After her serve is complete, she will sub out. So Edwards going after Rutherford as a defender. 23 to 19 is the lead in the opening set here at Stanford. The Cardinals and the and Houston still to come. I want to remind you here Saturday's afternoon college basketball doubleheader. North Carolina hosts Georgia Tech at 3:15 Eastern Time. Then Jalen Wilson and number six Kansas take on Missouri. Both games are here on ESPN and of course on the ESPN app. And North Carolina. After being ranked number one briefly, starting 5-0, and oh, they have lost four straight. Back with Missy Whittemore, former star setter at the University of Florida. Another good season for the Gators, but your thoughts on their season and uh, going out earlier today. You know, I felt like for the inexperience of that Gator group, so many young players and then a few players for Florida who were just inexperienced in a Gator jersey as transfers, I thought they really came together and had an impressive season. You know, I think to be where they were, Coach Mary Wise and company were thrilled. It was a great run for them. And to, to share the SEC title with Kentucky, um, you know, that coveted title, I think makes for a really positive season. Over on ESPNU, Wisconsin was up two sets to one. The winner of that will take on the Pitt Panthers down in the bottom of the bracket. Number one overall seed, excuse me, number three overall seed. They were the number one seed last year. Louisville Cardinals will take on the Oregon Ducks and Mimi Collier and Brooke Nunaviller. And the Oregon Ducks fought off four match points to oust the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Just being told, thank you, James. Just being told that uh, Penn State is up 11-10 in the fourth. A must-win set situation for the Nittany Lions, winners of seven national championships. Blossom has been really good. Boy, she adjusts tempo to her outside attackers over and over again. A little higher to Edwards, a little flatter and quicker to Luke's. That ball just waterfall down inside. Pretty lucky swing that time. And yeah. Aaron Lamb would say exactly the same. Well off the net, which can sometimes make the timing of the block a little more difficult. And I think that works in Lamb's favor. But you mentioned Gabby Blossom as we see her there, 13 and white. Her ability to adjust tempo. She's only been at San Diego since since January. She's had to learn, learn the speed of each attacker as it's different for each. Tough serve, boy, you saw that one coming. Audrey Whitworth, that's her 22nd ace on the year. And speaking of San Diego and Blossom, they're siding out at 63.2%, Kentucky at 54%. That's a big, big discrepancy. 23-21. Rolling again, what a good start by number 11. 
and Audrey Whitworth, who played very little at the beginning of the season, has been a difference maker. Puts another really nice serve and play for Kentucky. Forces the setter off of the net, but then isn't able to get there in time for that really nice off speed by Froling. Maddie Allen on to serve set point number one. It was that 4-1 run that really put this opening set into San Diego's favor. Bevin, look out below. Look at that play. Hanging and tapping down is number 15. Boy, she's a special talent, Johnny Taylor. This is what you call athleticism. And Craig Skinner has said, when you have players on your roster like the Johnny Taylor, it just makes you look like a good coach. I think this is one of those instances. Set point number two. Luke's ripping down the line. So Froling and Luke's, but Gabby Blossom. The keys to the car right now, and it's a very smooth running machine. Very nice opening set, particularly by the San Diego Toreros. Looking for their 30th win on the year. We expected a really good battle between the number two and number three seed. It's exactly what we got. Now time for Kentucky to respond. The San Diego Toreros, the number five overall seed out of the 64 teams, the champions of the West Coast Conference. Best ever team, no question for Jen Petri. And boy, did they look like it in that opening set, led by their stars. Yeah, they generated 17 kills in this opening set alone. The three-headed monster reared its head. It was rolling. Of course, Edwards with some big, powerful rips on the left side. Hitting it off that block, and Katie Luke's getting in on the action as well. Defensive and offensive. We said this team is special because they can score points from all three pins. They are a pin-dominant offense, but these are three pins who are very capable of carrying a heavy load. Yeah, and some key numbers. San Diego out hit Kentucky 268 to 122. Had three blocks to four, but here are the numbers. 64% side out for San Diego, 44% scoring. So when they served San Diego and when they were receiving, they were by far the better team. But it's that 4-1 run that really moved things in the Toreros' favor. Teeler again. An easy kill for Johnny Teeler getting that one to rattle through. Adjustments for Kentucky. Well, that's Teeler's only her second kill so far. Only one kill in the first set. This is a Kentucky team who is averaging around 15 kills per set on the season. A nice number, but had only 11 kills in the first set. So I think they've got to stay in system a little more so that they can generate some offense. Yeah, I'm really glad you pointed that out because Teeler gotten a lot of opportunities, but San Diego doing an exceptional job against her defensively, putting a lot of hands in her face. She's hitting zero. Two kills, two errors, nine attempts. Whitworth back at the service line for Kentucky has been very good. And I mentioned in the first set, this is a player who didn't play a lot early in the season for Kentucky and due to some injuries found herself on a court on the court and just played so well that they had to find a way to keep her out there. She came in when Reagan Rutherford was injured and Rutherford was only playing the front court. And Craig Skinner goes, this Whitworth kid is so good. We gotta find a way to get her out there. We're in number 19 in blue. Both of these teams obviously in a 5-1 setter goes across the front row and that time Edwards goes right at Emma Groom and swings over the shorter blocker down the line. Not a matchup that favors Kentucky. Good eye that time by Eleanor Bevan, the 5'5 sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky. She was the SEC Libero of the Year in 2021. This last year, see her in the light blue jersey there, excuse me. She's over on the right side, receiving here. Excuse me, I got a little backwards there. There's a Johnny Teeler, and Blossom just slugging that ball up in the air. But back to Bevan, did not make, the, there she is right there, but the ball is in. Bevan ducking out of the way. Craig Skinner was not happy that her outstanding, his outstanding Libero did not, was not Libero of the year again, and didn't make the all-conference team. Blossom just taking a stab at this ball, and somehow San Diego manages to turn that into somewhat of an in-system look for Brianna Wet Edwards. That is tra tremendous transition volleyball. Taylor again. Wow. Brianna Edwards and Johnny Taylor, who on the year hits 341.
And the Torero streaking here after Kentucky got off quickly. Look at Edwards making that move to her left and then strong hands up above the net. We see the length of San Diego having an impact. You've seen Kentucky a lot this year and through the last couple of years. If Teeler continues to struggle, where does Craig Skinner go? You know, I think we talked about it coming in. Rollins and Rutherford can be their key attackers. Unbelievable dig by Bevan, but then Froling continues to roll, and that was a very sharp angle. Five-nothing run for San Diego. To finish the point on Kentucky, Paul, I think Rawlings and Rutherford can be key attackers, but when things go south for Kentucky, often it has to do with their ability to manage at a system, and that's going to be key for those two. Johnny's Taylor can still do that. Another stuff block for number 15 in blue. Because when Kentucky's playing well, they don't necessarily have to have offense from Ajani Taylor, but they do have to have her impact the match in some way, shape, or form, and that's exactly one way she can do it. Perfect pass by the Libro I referred to before in Benbo. How smooth does this offense look? Number seven, Blackwell, with a kill out of the middle from Blossom. And it all has to do with Gabby Blossom. That was just a beautiful set as she pushes the ball away, and Blackwell goes with that set, allowing her to swing around the big block of Bella Bell. Kentucky hitting zero in the second set. Gabby Blossom and San Diego, 375. Nice chop inside the block that time off of Luke's. Nice play by Adana Rollins. Rollins now with five kills on 13. And even with that swing from Kentucky, San Diego making it really difficult for Kentucky to score points. Luke was right in position to play defense. That ball just inches out of bounds. San Diego won the opening set 25-22. We were tied at 11, and then the Toreros went on the biggest run of that opening set for either team at 4-1. Nice tip. Rutherford going off speed right over, tantalizingly over the top of the block. And successful because she disguised this tip really well, didn't drop her elbow or give it away, but she goes up high and really nice placement. That's rejected again, but a net violation. Uh, that was a little unlucky for Rutherford. She was all over the San Diego attacker. Two really elite setters, the setter of the year in their respective conferences. Emma Grom, the 5'9 sophomore out of Loveland, Ohio. Player of the year, setter of the year, wearing number four in blue over on the right side. Good block. Kind of a wristy swing, and that was rejected San Diego. Their physicality is having an effect on Kentucky, don't you think? I think so, and Stoner does a really nice job of waiting, seeing the set, and then chasing. A nice lateral move by Stoner to close that block. Rollins trying to throw up into the block, and this time it's number eight. Stoner at six foot one with some help from Froling, again at six foot five. Nowhere to go against that big block from San Diego. San Diego up a set, leading 9-5 here at Stanford. And another stuff. Boy, Kentucky needs a timeout. They're trailing 10-5. And the block of San Diego. Taller, more physical, and they are putting service pressure right now on the Kentucky Wildcats. The numbers don't lie. All-American setter Gabby Blossom doing her thing, but so are the attackers as well. Yeah, in this set alone, San Diego hitting 400 to negative 83 for Kentucky. Good swing down the line. Kentucky's going to need to find a way for some stress-free kills because the defense right now of San Diego in the backcourt and blocking is really putting a lot of stress. Yeah, it puts a lot of pressure on Kentucky to pass nearly perfectly so that they can be in system and give themselves a chance against the San Diego block. That 
serve was too easy, created the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Rolling back at the line, five make it six kills on 12 swings and three blocks with a star opposite for San Diego. 11 to six is the advantage, another tough serve. Boy, Luke, <laughs> she was gritting her teeth. You knew she was gonna hit the cover off of that number 18 in white. Luke's and Froling building blocks of this San Diego team. I saw them as youngsters at a regional in Illinois in 2018 and the experience that those two play with now. Wow, COVID and that extra year has really allowed Coach Petri to put together a phenomenal team. We mentioned the difference in the opening set. I mean, there were several, but the 4-1 run was key. And you put on top of that a 5-0 run for Jen Petri and Toreros here in the second. That's why San Diego is leading 12-7. And San Diego is serving much tougher. That's a smart shot up into the block to recycle the point. Poor set by Blossom. But gets bailed out. San Diego gets bailed out by a net violation. To your point, Paul, absolutely. Gabby Blossom purposefully pushing that ball into the Kentucky block to get it right back with the opportunity, as you said, to rest. San Diego at 327, Kentucky 093. Kentucky on the year. They were first in the SEC at 290. It gives you an idea of how well San Diego is playing. Reagan Rutherford can do that question for you. Offensively, backup middle blocker Elise Getzinger can really bring some offense. Is that something that Kentucky might look at in the near future? We have not seen her in the tournament, but as you said, she is an offensive threat. There's a look at Kentucky in the system when they're not swinging into two blockers and how lethal Rutherford could be. But yes, if offense is what they need, Getzinger is where they might go. I agree. A Johnny Teeler, we talked about the length of the block of San Diego. <laughs> Not for Teeler. Man, she's got to be special, but that time working with 5'9 setter Emma Grome as well. <laughs> Kentucky got to have it, take advantage of opportunities down the line. Nice dig that time by Bennett. A wonderful effort by both teams. Craig Skinner and Ajani Teeler wanted a lift against San Diego. Not going to get the benefit of that call. Love the response of Kentucky, though, and the defensive effort after we've seen San Diego control parts of this match with their big block. Kentucky raises their defensive level as well. Perfect pass. Love that by Bevan. Johnny Teeler, who got off to a very uncharacteristically slow start. That was Eleanor Bevan, the outstanding libero, with the delivery that time to Grom. Really nice tempo from Grom there to the right pin as we see Kentucky split the net, run a Johnny Teeler off of two feet from the right side, and force that San Diego block to have to go side to side. Teeler, three kills, three errors on 12 swings. It's going to be a net violation on Ajani Teeler. Found herself all alone, a little extra reach, a little extra effort. You give the kill to Luke's on the violation. And I believe that's three blocking net violations against Kentucky that have handed a point to San Diego. 15 to 10 is the advantage for the West Coast Conference champions. 29 and 1 overall, 18 and 0. The ball tucked down inside by Adana Rollins. The transfer from first Minnesota, then to Penn State, now to Kentucky. And playing against former teammate Gabby Blossom, who also transferred from Penn State. Kentucky still has not put a run together of more than two points. Perfect pass. Wow, the push from Gabby Blossom. That's how it's done. Setter to opposite, taking out the trash on the left side. That would normally be called out of system, but Gabby Blossom can set it from that position and look like she's in system. That was so nicely placed.
Bella Bell doesn't get many opportunities. Number 14 in blue, not a big part of the offense in there for her blocking, which she is expert at. Averaging 1.3 rejections per set, 16 to 12. Once again, if you're just joining us, 25 to 22 was the win for San Diego in the opening set. Still to come, Stanford and Houston. right front this is just a mistake you can't make as a Donna Rollins you have to know if your setter is front row or back row and I think she just lost track in the moment no blocker up for throwing rare service error in this match for either team that is the fourth service error for San Diego but I still think they're winning the serve and receive battle big time even in spite of those uh, additional errors if you will lots of pressure on Adonna Rollins and the rest of the Kentucky receivers. And right back at you for Rollins. And for fans, I know that's so frustrating when you get the ball to turn around and give it right back. But we have seen the capability of San Diego when you don't put pressure on them and try to pull Gabby Blossom off the net. You really have to be effective from the service line. San Diego hit 333 on the match. That was a poor set, but nicely saved that time by Lamb. Good play by the outside attacker. Nice strong tip shot from Lamb to wipe it off the blocker's hands as that ball just, as you mentioned, came out of Grom's hands a little awkwardly. There is Bevan. 30 aces on the year. That doesn't tell the whole story. That's what tells the story. Nice save. Free ball coming to Kentucky, and Bevan will handle first contact. One blocker out. Really good transition for Kentucky. Bevan serving and then making that move all the way up into right front to play the free ball. Here she comes, diving into right front and does a nice job of handling it. See that Emigrum doesn't even have to move. That is a three option opportunity which opens things up for Aaron Lamb. Jen Petri putting Olivia Bennett on the floor now to add some receiving. They avoid her right in the lap of Luke's and missed out of bounds. 18-16. Bevan will continue to serve. So Froling now on the sideline. She was out of the receive, but an additional passer on the floor for San Diego. The first three, nothing run. Biggest run so far for Kentucky. They're right back in it. Look at Luke's. You see the difference in tempo to Edwards and, and Luke's. How, do, how does that affect uh, Kentucky? Well, the blockers have to make the adjustment, and it's just so impressive that Gabby Blossom is so in tune with her attackers. She knows exactly the set they need to be successful. Priest on the floor. She made some nice plays defensively. A one-arm bandit, a gator, getting that ball up, giving San Diego some transition opportunities. Bounds by Teeler. It was a really nice pass from Reagan Rutherford. Put it right on top of Emma Grown, but you could see Teeler's shoulders just closed off to the net and she swings out of bounds. Timeout called by Kentucky. San Diego up a set and leading by four here at Stanford in the second. of the Division I Women's Volleyball Championship continues on Saturday starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time on ESPNU. For more information on match times and listings, visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. A look and the update of the bracket. The Pitt Panthers have moved on with a win over Florida and an update over on ESPNU. Penn State and Wisconsin tied it to a piece. Last score, last score, just a more recent update. 6-1, the Badgers in the fifth set. They went five sets last time they played in the, la in the waning moments of the regular season of the Big Ten. And that's our second Big Ten battle of the day as we saw Ohio State knock off Minnesota already. Kentucky now out of timeouts, trailing 20 to 16. You know, you always debate. I, I don't mind that miss whatsoever because San Diego has been so good from the line with pressure. I agree.
Player of the year loops with nine kills. It's the overall team hitting percentage. It is a huge difference. Oh, that's a mishandled ball, but Emma Grome! Grome to the rescue! A little indecision there, I think, from Edwards. As she and Stoner were both in position to take a swing at that ball, Edwards goes for it, but you felt like she didn't take a big rip. Just kind of hits it in a little light and Grome all over it. Yep, paid the price. Nice play by Grome. And then right back, good kill off the right side that time by Haley Stoner. Gabby Blossom so good at getting something out of every attacker on this squad. Coming in now to serve Alex Hoagland, 5'6 junior out of Berkeley, California. Can you say Berkeley, the home of Cal, when you're sitting at Stanford? <laughs> I, I'll be careful. Three-point lead once again for the Toreros. One-on-one. -on -one. Both of these centers are elite. When we say one-on-one, -on -one, it is advantage to the attacker, but it has everything to do with the setting choice and the first contact. Giving that center three options and then her ability to distribute it around those blockers. Raya Walker in the backcourt now wearing number nine and also on number 19, Whitworth has an ace. Off the top of the tape, nice reaction that time. Middle blocker, Blackwell keeping that ball off the floor, huge swing. Good first contact right on target, one on one again. And Rollins missed it out of bounds. Had exactly what she wanted, Adana Rollins. Emma Groom goes up and jump sets that and holds the middle blocker. And Adana, Adana Rollins knows that was a missed opportunity. I can see why Katie Luke's got player of the year. Yes, she's leading them in kills, but when she's in area six middle back, she digs a lot of balls. Contributes in every part of the game. Another dig by Luke's. Very nice transition set by Benbo. High flat by Frawley. And you've mentioned the fact that Kentucky needs to get Ajani Teeler going offensively. I think that's been a key to this match is San Diego's ability to defend her swing from the right side. Kentucky out of timeouts. San Diego two points away from taking a commanding lead. Smart play. Really smart play by Layla Blackwell. Doesn't always have to be hard, it just has to be smart. That was all about redirection, hit it where they're not. Set point number one. Kentucky is gonna have to look in the mirror because they don't want to look at San Diego anymore. The Toreros are playing at an incredibly high level. Good set by Lukes. Off the block and out of bounds. It's a two sets to none lead for San Diego. Torreira is swinging with absolutely no fear as Edwards blasts that final point off the block. Really impressive by the undefeated champions of the West Coast Conference. 25-22, 25-19 will step aside. San Diego hitting 333 on the match, holding Kentucky to 147. Madonna Rollins hitting barely over zero, and we've told you about the struggles of Ajani Teeler. Rollins, good blocking, making it tough on Rollins, having to take difficult swings out of bounds to open the third. That length of San Diego again, making itself known at the net. First comes the blocking, and then that can lead to the attacking errors as you get that attacker thinking about the block. There are the very important critical runs. Good response by Rollins for San Diego. And only in that second set was Kentucky able to put together a run of three or more, and it was exactly three. Johnny Taylor has announced that she will come back for her COVID year, that making Kentucky fans very, very happy. And me too. <laughs> I'm a big admirer of Johnny Taylor. Blackwell out of the middle, nice play. 
Gabby Blossom to Blackwell. I don't think I've seen them miss. The connection has just been a thing of beauty as you see that time Blossom pushes it away and it allows Blackwell to split the block. Well, we focused on the pin hitters, but Layla Blackwell and Haley Stoner are a combined eight for 15. Pretty good. Ball missed out of bounds, being told that in Madison, Wisconsin has indeed survived to advance against uh, Big Ten rival, the Penn State Nittany Lions. So in those conference matchups, Minnesota, a loser, Nebraska earlier. So three Big Ten teams exited the tournament at the regional semifinal level. Last two swings by Adonna Rollins. Really smart, we've seen her take two balls off the block, one high off the block and the other wiping it out of bounds. Reagan Rutherford is the hot hand, the left-handed opposite for Kentucky. She's six of 11, hit 364. Rollins, nine of 25, hitting 080. And Ajani Teeler is still hitting negative, more errors than kills. And on the year, to put that in perspective, Ajani Teeler hits 341. She's hitting 400 points below her season average. Rome waiting patiently. San Diego up two sets to none. Kentucky again, the national champions back in 2020. That was in Omaha over the University of Texas. Nice step by Adonna Rollins and a little stare down. Welcome live, everybody, to Stanford, and maybe just saving the best for last, although that five-set match between Wisconsin, Minnesota, excuse me, Wisconsin and Penn State, and earlier in the day, Oregon and Nebraska, with Missy Whittemore, a star out of the University of Florida, I'm Paul Sunderland, and has been all San Diego so far. Look at the hitting percentage and the discrepancies there. San Diego has been the superior team in every phase of the game, particularly at the service line and attacking. They won the opening set 25-22. They won the second 25-19. And Missy, the biggest difference is you see it so far between these two teams, what San Diego is doing to get so much pressure on Kentucky. Well, I think San Diego has served really well and kept Kentucky out of system offensively, made it really hard on them to generate points. Only 11 kills in the first set for Kentucky, 12 in the second. This is a team who typically averages 15 kills per set, just hasn't been able to get their offense going. On the other side, San Diego just continues to look really in system and has not only matched Kentucky defensively, but with their big block at the net, has had the edge defensively. There is Jen Petrie, San Diego 29-1. 18-0 in the West Coast Conference, just recently named for the seventh time the West Coast Conference Coach of the Year. Grace Froling, the six foot five oppo for San Diego, out of Los Angeles for the third time, first team all conference, putting up really good numbers from the very first serve. And again, Gabby Blossom moving toward left back, reverses the flow with a beautiful push to Froling up there in right front. She was 17 of 34 against a very good team out of the Pac-12 in Washington State, and even better so far tonight. 10 of 17, hitting 471. Froling with the 10 kills, but Edwards and Katie Lukes with nine apiece. So as we mentioned, it's been the three-headed monster as San Diego continues to get production, high-level pr production from all three pens. On the slide, Haley Stoner again with the kill. Haley Stoner, only a sophomore at six foot one, but boy, do I love her athleticism. Look at this on serve receive, loads in the middle and just chases that ball down from Gabby Blossom. And, and remember the conversation, and I'll allude to it again. We were watching practice yesterday, yesterday and we spoke with the San Diego head coach, Jen Petri, and I said, Stoner was on fire today in practice, and, and Coach Petri said, yeah, let her carry that over into the match, and she certainly has. Smart shot that time by Lamb, number 13 in blue. Off speed, off the edge of the block. And a good play there by Kentucky setter that time, the SEC setter of the year as Grome pushes that one out to left front and forces the San Diego block to chase, creating a nice little hole. Lukes is a solid passer. She was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, and we've already seen her put on a display defensively in Area 6. Number 18 in white. Really, really solid player. Another beautiful pass, as you mentioned, it goes right back to Stoner. Gabby Blossom understands 
how to distribute the ball equally, and yet she gets the concept of the hot hand and when to go back to a player. Stoner now five of seven, no errors. Low seam, sometimes a little bit risky, but when you have a rocket arm like a Johnny Taylor, you can get that through. Blackwell about a half a step late to close on this one, and because of that, a Johnny Taylor with the advantage. Another nice set there from Emma Grum. Yeah, and, and Edwards completely overran the play. The outside blocker got to close that off. Here is Audrey Whitworth. Got off to a good start, had a, an ace. They got to get off Luke. She's passing the ball just too well. There's Edwards again. As you mentioned, wow, Luke's again nailing the pass. They move that set in. Look at the tempo. They go to the gap there, and Brianna Edwards just comes and gets it. Froling has 10 kills. Brianna Edwards just got in double figures. That high flat at that tempo is not going down against San Diego. Adonna Rollins got to make an adjustment. But the transition volleyball we'll see from San Diego is creating points. Gabby Blossom finding Blackwell again in transition. 10-7 is the advantage. Adonna Rollins, 9 of 26, seven errors. Perfect pass. Another good block deflection. Grace Froling having the match of her life. And we should remind, San Diego is in the regional semifinals for the fourth time. They are 0-3, excuse me, the fifth time. They are 0-4 previously. So they are looking to make some history for Torero Volleyball, leading 11-7. They are one more set point away from a regional final for the first time. San Diego off to another solid start in Stanford. On top is the number two seed, two sets to none, and 11-7 back with Mitty Wharton. Missy Whittemore once again on Paul Sunderland. And what an offensive display. Offensively, defensively, and look at Gabby Blossom. She's responsible for hitting 370 so far in the match. And they only get better because in set three, this current set, they're hitting 667. What did you say? <laughs> Right now, across the front row for San Diego, 6-3, 6-4, 6-5. That length is dominating right now. And what's dominating are these large scoring runs for San Diego. Now a 4-0 run. Beautiful dig. Annie Benbow, the best who's ever done it at San Diego. First contact by Blossom. Oh, what a block. That was a perfect set in transition, but uh, Ajani Taylor is just Ajani Taylor. Even better block. And I hate sometimes that an attack has to go down as an error when there's a stuffed block, because sometimes there's nothing wrong with the swing. Yeah. You just run into a better defender. Absolutely. I don't think it should be called an error exactly. when the block wins. Yeah, I agree. You hit it out of bounds, that's another story. Right. Hurling, back-to-back stuffs. Here comes Kentucky. Scoring points with some defense. Ajani Taylor rotates back, and Bella Bell comes in and picks up right where she left off. A little bit of a mini run put together by Taylor, but it comes to an end there. When you look at the numbers that Kentucky has put up on the year, first in the SEC, at a 290 efficiency clip, 15 kills per set. Here we are in the third, and they only have 28 kills, way below their season average, but most notably at 134 efficiency. Really good pass, but missed out of bounds. And sometimes numbers don't tell the story. I think it's interesting to look at eight blocks for San Diego to Kentucky's 10. That's kind of hard to believe, but it's the block deflections that we have seen from San Diego that have allowed them to transition defensively. It's been so impressive. That's an absolutely perfect point. Off speed here. Rollins has got to get more aggressive. She's not terminal. Oh, that's a good shot. Right into the campfire. Nice. Bennett, 
Nice job by Adonna Rollins to find some open court space. But to your point, Paul, that block has forced her to back away a little, not being as aggressive with her swing. You're surprised we have not seen Elise Getzinger for a little more offense. No, we haven't seen her in the tournament. So it seems as though Kentucky has made that decision to go with Bella Bell, but she certainly has been considered the more offensive middle over the course of the season. Winning block again, number seven, Blackwell, along with Katie Lukes. And just to finish the thought, because we were at all the practices yesterday, Getzinger was there. She's healthy. She was very active and really good offensively in Kentucky's practice. 15 to 10 is the advantage. San Diego's got to stay in the moment. Bell throwing crossbody. Bella Bell with the kill. Couple tip shots now from the Wildcats that have found the floor as they try to work around this big San Diego block. The passing has been good on both sides, but San Diego and their littles have been better. Bennett, along with Maddie Allen, and of course their fine Libero Benbo. Combine them with the passing of Katie Luke, so it's been very good. I have this San Diego team in Provo at BYU, and Katie Luke's, I'm, my sample size is bigger, number 18 in white, is really an outstanding player. She'll be hitting out on the left after this serve by Froling. as I sit here. She was talking to the defender about taking the court so that she could get ready to attack. Look at her loading from the back row. They don't have three options. This offense has four options when they're in the system. Timeout is called by Kentucky. They are out of timeouts trailing. Two sets to none and 17 to 11. What a women's college basketball doubleheader we have for you coming up this Sunday afternoon. It's Louisville versus Kentucky in our first matchup at 1 Eastern time on ESPN. Then at 3 over on ABC, number 6 UConn faces Diamond Miller and number 20 Maryland should be another great afternoon in college basketball. The Cardinals have won the last five versus the Wildcats. Update you on our side of the bracket. At the top, it will be Texas and Ohio State. That's coming up on Saturday. Bottom half of the bracket, San Diego on their way to their first ever regional final, and they will take on the winner. A number one seed, Stanford Cardinal, nine times a national champion, taking on the Houston Cougars back in the NCAA tournament. For the first time since 2000, they have been to a regional semifinal once before when they defeated Missy Whittemore's Florida Gators way back when in 1994. Yeah, every time I made that note, it made me just a little sick as I wrote first time <laughs> since 1994. And I thought, well, I remember 94. I was on the losing end of that one when Houston advanced. Stanford, the winningest, the greatest program, the most successful program. The only measure championships with nine. But the last couple of years, they did not participate. Their season came to an abrupt end during the COVID year. Here's Kevin Hamley. Came over from the University of Illinois, and he is never leaving Stanford, I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> Froling. Good block on the outside by Rutherford. And just one last thought about Stanford. Eliminated by Minnesota in the second round last year, so they are back in very, very familiar territory in a regional semifinal. There's some time left for Kentucky, just some. But it certainly feels like that. San Diego is inching closer and closer to their first regional final ever. Interestingly, as we've talked so much about Gabby Blossom, and what she's done for this team. It will not be her first regional final. It will be her third in her career. She went to two of those with Penn State. And boy, has she provided some nice leadership for this San Diego team who just looks unshakable. What, what is, a complete performance. What does Kentucky have to do to give themselves a chance from here on out? Control first contact. They've got to be in system. A rare miss. 
piece of the backcourt that time by Kylie Priest. And if I'm San Diego, I'm not serving Eleanor Bevan wearing number six in the Libero jersey. She's 62% perfect pass. That's a serving error. Here is Rutherford. Kentucky trailing by five. And that missed wildly out of bounds. And conversely, I don't think Kentucky should be serving Luke's. She's their best passer statistically. Pick your poison between Luke's yeah. and Binbo. Both phenomenal passers. And Bennett in the middle has done a very solid job. Perfect pass. Look at that. And missed out of bounds. I didn't see any touch. San Diego asking for a touch. What did you think, Missy? I did not see it either. It's right in front of us, but you know, Petri's got the challenges to use. Coach Petri, and she's going to go to it. Both coaches have their full allotment, starting the match with two, and as long as you're correct, you keep them. And thankfully, the officials have been doing a nice job. We haven't had to have too many challenges. You can challenge touch off the block, ball in or out, net violation, foot fault on the service line, foot fault on the three-meter line and four contacts or up or down. And the call here is the ball out of bounds off of the swing of Brianna Edwards. That would be a point to Kentucky, but they have challenged a touch on the block. This is the toughest one because of the frame speed, and it'll improve as time goes. Difficult for the officials. It would have to be, I think, the right hand of Emma Grom, and I do think there was a touch there off of that go. right, that right pinky finger of Emma Grom. Paul, wrong again. <laughs> I was wrong in real time as well. I didn't see it. Well, Brianna Edwards hits the ball so darn hard, it right. just exploded past the block, but that is wonderful observation and use of the challenge, and importantly, a two-point switch, and now a 9-4 lead. And well done by the officials yep. as they get us back to play very quickly. Alex Hoagland will come back on, back up center. 19-14. Another block touch. That ball tipped by Lamb and out of bounds. Boy, the block work for San Diego is just so outstanding. And yeah, there it is. You see that finger of groom as it's bent backward. Wow, great work by our, by our crew to catch that frame. 20 to 14. Lamb again and missed it out of bounds. Back to back errors. Almost time to make history for the San Diego Toreros, 21 to 14. This is a two hitter rotation for Kentucky where they split the net. Ajani Teeler will swing from the right side, Lamb from the left. And typically Kentucky is very successful, but this San Diego block has given them all they can manage. Fabulous touch that time off the tape by Bevan, the Libero for Kentucky. Hope springs eternal, but Kentucky's got to be perfect. If there's a server you would want at the line, if you're Kentucky, to try to make a run, it's Audrey Whitworth, the freshman. She has really been the one that's been able to put some pressure on San Diego. San Diego has won 26 matches in a row. Last time they lost was to Louisville. This is, they're, they're playing almost a perfect match tonight against a really, really good opponent, champions yeah. of the SEC. Must have. Nice play. Emma Grome at 5-9. Nice read and tip to the floor. And that's one of the next steps for Emma Grome as she grows as a setter playing across the front row is not just how to be offensive, but when to be offensive. And boy, did she pick her the right time there. We also haven't seen much offense from Gabby Blossom. I think she just enjoys distributing the ball so much and getting big numbers for her hitters. You just don't see her go to it. Look at these contacts. The quality of contact for San Diego is just absolutely next level. First in serve receive, and then when they were ahead in the point. The accuracy again from Gabby Blossom. Her hands are so still. Her ability to hold the block, as you see here, 
and then release. Ajani Taylor, no idea where that ball is going. There was only one blocker up. And then again, look, late in the rally, creates another one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Rollins, did that get a piece of the block? Called out of bounds, no touch. Two points away. And we may see a challenge here from Craig. Oh, got to do it. Yeah, yeah good call, Missy. Absolutely have to challenge. Just to recap, the Toreros won the opening set 25-22 again. It has been the size of their scoring runs which has dictated how this match has gone. Remember, tied at 11 in the opening set, 4-1 run, San Diego never looked back. 25-19 in the second, 11-7 advantage for San Diego early, and now for the first time ever, they're looking to advance. here is out of bounds off of the Adonna Rollins swing, but Kentucky has challenged that it hits the blockers of San Diego before traveling out of bounds, which should be out of bounds off of San Diego. But you saw the deflection usually when that ball changed direction, but it can, the tape can hit the blocker's arm. This is going to be a tough one. I say no. I say that's a hitting error for Adonna Rollins. I would agree. Interesting, you so rightly point out as a former setter yourself, Jen Petrie talking to us yesterday about how illusory that Gabby Blossom was because she stays so upright. A lot of times setters lean forward, they lean backwards and set in the opposite direction, but Gabby Blossom is just absolutely up straight, and it's very difficult to read, even when she's out of system. Yeah, up straight, and her hands are so still, and that call will be confirmed, and so the original call out of bounds off of the Adonis Rollins attack is the point to San Diego. 23 to 16. No question as a setter who I would go to right there. Give Teeler the opportunity to extend this match. Look at that first contact and pass. Chance for Grom. Must have if you're Rollins. Rollins and Kentucky get a break. You take it, I've got it, and the ball falls. Too many players for San Diego in position to make a play on that one. Right side, heavy hand. Kept in by Walker. Edwards misses that out of bounds. And yet we're going to get a net violation against Kentucky. Paul, that's going to put San Diego at match point. Everything going San Diego's way. First of five make it first of six match points. San Diego has been superb. Maddie Allen, match point number one. 